Flashing back to when Denver took a 2-0 series lead against LA, and what was my response? I made an all-time bad take in predicting LA would not only come back to win the series, but go on to win the title. And believe it or not, the trolling went much further than that. Three of the next four games, and yes, there will be at least three or four games left in this series, will take place in sunny Los Angeles, with Kim Kardashian sitting courtside, combined with the additional 25 baddies with clout, and one celebrity after the next sitting courtside, including LeJack Nicholson. Trust me, the pressure for Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic is about to be unheard of, and these foreigners are gonna quite simply crack. See, I did say that. Mm -hmm. Very clever. <laughs> come on, man. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. You're making money. Come on. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Man. No, come on, man. <laughs> I'll admit my attempting to control the narrative in the Lakers' favor since their 2023 trade deadline mastery went too far. With all the momentum on Denver's side after taking such a commanding series lead, I took the approach of latently trying to buy some Mile High City real estate as opposed to giving the Nuggets credit. Personally, as a man who can in certain styles of content be a Vince McMahon type of promoter for the NBA, you you violated me! I'm always going to take my fair share of L's. But even after Denver exposed your boy, they weren't about to throw it back in my face for the sake of creating content, which would only benefit the media. Twitter has been extremely quiet in terms of discussions regarding Denver's first title in franchise history. Some are claiming the hood just doesn't rock with Jokic. I'll take some blame here in my pursuit of being a promotional workhorse for LeBron and the Lakers. Also, I feel like the Nuggets not calling out the doubters was almost backhanded trash talk towards previous doubters looking to create content regarding how the Nuggets proved them wrong. In other words, I'll take my L. Aside from Malone calling out the overcoverage of the Lakers a couple times, and Vic Lombardi being a phenom at the parade. Denver stayed under the radar in the weeks following chip number one. This displays humbleness from not only their organization top to bottom, but their fan base, who has stayed even keel, aware their goals don't end here as well. It's that sustainable mentality which will give Denver a shot at a dynasty, like so many across the NBA universe are starting to interpret. That combined with Denver's faith in one another and genuine respect for how the game really should be played, sets the table for an all-time tandem at the forefront. The roster from a personality standpoint isn't about gloating after the grind cements in the form of ultimate glory. Conversely, they put the utmost value into the trials and tribulations of the 100 game plus NBA marathon, now 1-0 in the finals. Jamal averaged 26.1 points, 7.1 dimes, 1.5 steals, and 5.7 boards per night in the playoffs, where this Nuggets team went 16-4. While Jamal is technically this team's second option, his perimeter creation quite frankly carries. The reason Denver isn't being talked about as much as they should be is the confusion they provide to not simply basketball fans, but average observers who merely catch a glimpse of them. Jokic is Denver's alpha male, but that shouldn't take away from the fact that Murray is capable of being the most important player on a championship team. That's one of the major problems with NBA discourse, how fans over-obsess about who's the number one or number two. Blue Arrow being a true hooper down to its core is underappreciated. Let's be fair to the world champions for their lack of flair for the dramatic, considering they won a chip at such an extremely young age. Jamal Murray won his first championship at age 26, Aaron Gordon at 27, MPJ at 24. Give these guys time, they're going to be marketable in the future. Many of the Nuggets' top pieces are only just entering their prime. Considering how impactful both MPJ and Aaron were in the championship run, that's scary. Murray said regarding he and Jokic during a post-championship interview with Complex, I think we have the most versatile and dominant one-two punch in the league. That's applicable to both he and Jokic's multi-dimensional on-court abilities and their leadership to either step up or back 
into this team's first or second option from both a basketball and communication standpoint. Strictly between the four lines and what makes Murray and Jokic versatile is their elite abilities to all of attack the defense going downhill, hit perimeter bombs from well beyond the arc, and be fundamentally sound enough to be able to spot up or pull up for mid-rangers. While having a mid-range game is undervalued in today's NBA, given it's statistically the game's most inefficient shot considering it's not a three and it's not at the basket, as a top option in the NBA, having an in-between game is crucial in terms of keeping the defense honest and guessing. Both Jokic and Murray have stable shooting mechanics and a confidence level that can embarrass doubters second-guessing them in even the subtlest of forms. Just take it from your boy, who had them go into Cancun even after being up 2-0. That wasn't the subtlest form of doubt to say the least, it was blatant. But given Jokic and Murray are smart enough to see through everything, my mindset in that Lakers video, swear to god, was to be extremely open in terms of my bias leaning towards the team I had talked about throughout the entire second half of the season. In other words, it was a clear-cut attempt to purchase mental real estate on God. The Lakers were competitive in games 3 and 4, keeping it within a couple possessions, but ultimately the focus level and determination from Jamal and Nikola wasn't going to be broken by even the deadliest of trolls. While I do know my stuff in terms of how he looked at several videos reviewing Denver's go-to plays, not to mention the fact that I watch basketball for a living, Playing these mind games as a Vince McMahon type of promoter is such a fun route to take, on the occasion at least. That's why I started saying later in the season in playoffs, which you know if you're a regular viewer, that understanding the media is so important. My alter ego in D-Flow can break the fourth wall on you at any given time. Just take the current video you're watching, for example. As for being a true hooper, since I did say I had a better handle than Jalen Brown one time, some decent evidence for you in this warm-up. I'm not going to show you my jump shot quite yet, but your boy Vince McMahon is ready to step in the ring, or rather on the court, with any player who comes after him in the media, so whether it's a good game or a bad one, when players are referencing what quote-unquote people are saying, be sure to give your boy D Flow a call-out. This is my script. This is our script and we are about to take the NBA game to the next level, that's right, even above those clowns Kelsey and Mahomes in the NFL. In all seriousness, this sport and these players combine to give you the best damn entertainment across all of pop culture. Basketball is beautiful because it showcases a man or woman's ability to stay poised under pressure across all facets. Whether that poise is exposed in their hand-eye coordination, their mentality, or their body language, Everything gets exposed to the public between the four lines. When the lights shine brightest though, the purest hoopers show up. That's what these boys in Denver just did in 2023. It's quite frankly just that simple. Whether their own fans or the mainstream media give them attention or not, bottom line is, everyone wants what Nicola and Jamal have right now. Just that swag. At the same time, while being all of those aforementioned three qualities, Denver is humble which allows those traits to rub off on others as opposed to get in their own heads. I think a lot of Murray and Jokic's confidence rubbed off on coach Mike Malone. Malone was the one feeling himself the most at the Nuggets parade I think, but with that said, his head is also fully on straight in terms of how he genuinely, and I mean that in the truest sense, cares for those around him. He specifically cares the most for, fittingly, Jamal and Nicola. Because in addition to being their two best players, Malone is well aware that being the first and second option entails Murray and Jokic also will have the two biggest egos, which is how it should be with your top one and two guy. Overall, the not mere mental fortitude and utterly polished skills on the court, but the blend of intelligence and maturity from Jokic and Murray is what collectively drove Denver across the checkered flag in 2023. This was D Flow. Thanks for watching until the end. Take care, and I'll see you next video.